Hello. Uh, a bit of maths news at the moment that's caught the public attention is um, someone's worked out how to embed the flat torus into three-dimensional space isometrically. Um, the reason it's caught the public's attention is that it's produced a really nice picture um, which lots of people have blogged and new scientists have written something about. Everybody loves it because it looks so weird. Um, but it's quite hard to understand what it means. Um, so I've had a quick look through the, the paper, which is not publicly available, sadly. Um, but I, sort, I think I've sort of worked out what they're doing and how it works. So I'm going to have a go at explaining it to you. Um, so first of all, the torus is, of course, um, a donut shape like this. Um, maybe a bit more even. Uh, so it's you can think of it as a circle that's been sliced. So the cross section is a circle and you sweep it round in another circle uh, and join them up to make this ring shape. Um, so if you try and flatten this um, so that um, straight lines work like straight lines on it, on this table, say, um, it, it's really hard. So I can flatten it out a bit and keep trying to flatten it. But still, there's this, this circle in the middle is considerably shorter than the circle around the outside. Um, so that's the problem, basically, that they've solved. So to draw the flat torus, um, you can sort of draw it flat on this table. If I draw a square and say I want to identify these two edges. So this edge really is the same as this one. Now to actually do that I'd have to bend space and time um, so I can't do that um, but I'll say here this edge is the same as that edge and this edge is the same as that edge. So if I can work out a way to get this to go into a 3D space, so these two lines really are the same one, and these two lines really are the same one, then I've embedded the flat torus into 3D space. So um, let's have a go at that. I've got my square here, and I'm going to join up this line with the bottom line. Okay, that's joined up. So I've created a, a cylinder now. And then if I want to join up the other two lines, the side ones, I've got to twist this round. And this dough is not particularly stretchy. If I join them up there, maybe, possibly. I've had to do a lot of stretching to get this to go together and it sort of collapsed in on itself. Um, so the problem is I started out with a flat sheet and I've had to stretch it in a few ways in order to get the ends to join up together. So um, what they do is they start with this um, torus like this and embedding that doesn't work. and they deliberately pick one that um, strict, is uh, strictly short. So that means that um, distance is measured on the square. Um, so for example, between here and here. So that distance or that distance. If I draw the same line in two different places, um, this one, let's say, went on the inside of the torus and the one on the edges went around the outside. Um, the one that would be the longest doesn't get stretched by the embedding. So we say um, this one stayed the same, the one on the inside got shrunk. So every, every distance is at most what it was on the flat torus but it might be a bit less. That's what they start with. And then they, uh, they add some corrugations to the shape, so wrinkles, which requires my next prop. I've prepared a lot. 
Uh, so here's a slinky, which is a, a cylinder uh, with a t-shirt wrapped around it to represent the uh, surface. And if I join these up, like so, and pull it all around, uh, it's all collapsing. Right. Pull my bits of t-shirt around. So what's meant to be happening here is, if I try and pull it tight, it's falling apart. Uh, in the middle, you can see the, the surface is um, wrinkling where it gets shorter. And that's what they're doing. They're adding corrugations or sort of wrinkles only in the places where it uh, where distances would have been shorter. They're not stretching around the outside. Um, let's suppose this t-shirt can't be stretched. It isn't very stretchy. Um, so they do those and they keep doing those again and again in different directions so that they only ever um, increase the distances that are short of what they wanted. Uh, they don't for a moment stretch this one in order to get a corrugation all the way around. Um, and basically that's it. They've boiled it down to there are three different directions that you can add these wrinkles in. Um, I should clear out what I mean by wrinkles. If you've got a line like that, you can increase the distance between points by instead making it go along a sine curve. So um, this bit goes to up there and that bit goes to down there. So the distance along the curve now is all this instead of just that. Um, so that's the 1D case. They do it in 2D on this surface or possibly in 3D, I'm not sure. Um, and they have three sets of these wrinkles. They do them all together. They have an algorithm such that repeated applications of this corrugation, they always know which corrugation to do. The limit of that, if you did it forever and ever, would create um, a flat torus shape. So all of the distances um, in, the, in the eventual 3D embedding, which I'll either sketch it, I'll, I might superimpose a picture on this when I edit it. Um, you have your torus, it's a terrible torus. There's a torus and the corrugations go around here and each corrugation then is also corrugated in another direction. Um, so once they're finished, the final thing has the property that all the distances in the original square between two points. If you pick those points in the, in the embedding, the distance is the same. Um, so that's what they've done. Um, they use something called convex integration theory to do this, which I don't understand. They say in the paper nobody understands it except specialists in the field. But really, the reason they did this wasn't because some, really because uh, they wanted to find an embedding of the flat torus into 3D space. It's because it's an application of this theory and they want to promote the use of this theory to uh, other fields where they might come in useful. Um, they said something about uh, other sciences. I don't know what. Um, so that's what they've done. Thanks.